So we've talked a little bit about the texture, the particle size, how the soil feels and ribbons out, and the structure, how it holds together. These are all characteristics that distinguish the different horizons and help us define the soil and understand how it works. Uh, one of the things that's most useful in classifying soils and also in understanding them, and, and probably the most obvious thing, is the color. The first thing we noticed when we walked up here is that this is sort of a reddish brown uh, soil and that it's blackish near the top and redder near the bottom. So there's a column here for the color. Uh, this can be done dry. If, if, if the weather had been dry, these colors would all look a little whiter and lighter. Uh, it, when it starts out dry, you can do both dry and moist. It's easy to add water, it's a lot harder to take it away. So today it's been raining a lot, so we're only going to do the moist colors. And the moist colors are the most uh, useful anyway. So in order to describe these colors in terms a little more precise than sort of reddish brown or mousy gray, uh, we use what's known as the Munsell Color Book. And uh, these, this is a, a book that was developed by an art teacher, an artist, uh, Munsell, uh, to teach his students about the relationships between uh, different colors. And I think you know, uh, the color book we use is designed specifically for soils, so it, it only has the kinds of colors that you find in soils, which surprisingly go from rather greenish colors. These are for swampy wetland soils where the iron is reduced and it becomes, uh, and the colors are often various forms of gray, even uh, sometimes greenish, uh, to some very red soils. Uh, like these, which are usually found uh, in tropical conditions, highly weathered soil. So you can see we're not quite that red. The first thing we want to do is figure out what page to use. Uh, in most profiles, you'll find that most of the colors are within a single page. Sometimes it's in a, a couple of pages. Uh, this is obviously redder than our profile, right? I think you can see that we have some red, but not that red. So as we go through the book, it goes from less red and more yellow. Uh, you do want to try to keep the book cleaner than I've kept mine. Uh, you want to put the soil actually behind and look at it through the holes. A little hard to keep these clean when your hands are dirty, right? So we're getting a little bit closer now. Let's take a look at the reddest horizon, which would be this BT horizon, and compare it to the uh, colors and I think you can see we're still probably not as red as this. I think we're probably going to be at least one more page over. This is the 5YR page. So as we the numbers get higher, this YR stands for yellow-red. We're starting to get pretty good color match here. Uh, that's, that's pretty close. Now, these uh, pages are slices in the continuum, so it's possible that your sample might fall between a page, right? So this looks like it's between those two pages. Let's get a little closer to the camera so you can see this. This is the 2.5 YR page. And we're a little browner than this. I don't think we're quite as red, although pretty, pretty close. Pretty close to this one. A little bit yellower, I think, than that. So I'll go with the next page. Sometimes if you rub it, you get a, what's known as a rubbed color. It's a little bit easier to tell the color on that. So we're pretty close there. We want to do this in natural light. And if we go to the next page, which is yellower still, uh, I think we're a little bit redder than this one. So. We can hone in on the 5YR pages. It's probably as close as we're going to get. And this looks like it's pretty close to this one. A 6 over 8. So if we think it's closest to that, that would be 5YR, 6 over 8. And the actual language for that would be a reddish yellow. Okay. Now this type of soil, by the way, in the old classification system from about a century ago, used to be called uh, red-yellow podzolic soils. So it's not surprising that the colors are going to be reddish-yellow. If we try this for the A horizon, 
We're, I think we usually can do it on the same page, but it's going to be much closer to the bottom because it's a darker color and closer to the to the spine spine because it's a less bright color. So I think that's probably as good a match as we're going to get. Again, it helps to keep the book clean. But let's just say that this is a 5YR 4 over 4, which would be a reddish brown, and it's a darker color, uh, and that indicates more organic matter. If we had something that was in this first column, the 1 column, which is all kind of grays, that would probably indicate a poorly drained soil, and we don't expect to find it in this location. Okay, so when we when we do a, a more complete description of the uh, of the soil after we filled in the texture and the color and things, we want to make some interpretations. We already mentioned that this uh, parent material is coastal plain sediments, and in this case, uh, it, it must have been associated with a river, but that was many millions of years ago. It's highly weathered material that's worn down from mountains and deposited under the water and then uplifted as the land as the sea level uh, lowered and the land was uh, uplifted. Uh, <clears throat> so we want to make some interpretations about this. We're on a fairly steep slope, probably about a 15% slope on the hillside near the top of the hill. Uh, so our position uh, is on the shoulder of this hill. We're not quite on the summit. Uh, so we want to know where we are, sort of what the slope percentage is, it's about 10 to 15 percent, and we're in the shoulder uh, position. So this is a position that's quite susceptible to soil erosion if it weren't protected so nicely by the covering of the forest leaves. Uh, this is a pretty sandy soil with good structure and lots of porosity in it, lots of uh, root channels. Uh, we don't see any, uh, even though we've had quite a bit of rain in the last few days, uh, the, you know, the water has moved on through uh, readily. And so uh, we can make some estimations that this is a, a, a well-drained to a very well-drained soil. We're in a high position in sandy material. Uh, the moisture availability is probably medium. Uh, it's a fair amount of clay down below that will hold moisture, quite a bit of organic matter in the top. Uh, so it should have a pretty good moisture holding capacity, although it is a a relatively sandy soil. It probably has uh, 70 or 75 percent sand in it, so it's not going to be very high in moisture, but probably a medium capacity, but pretty good depth, uh, so they'll have quite a bit of moisture available for good uh, growth of the vegetation. Infiltration rate in this site should be very good, uh, mostly because of the natural vegetation and the cover. I suspect, the, well, in fact, we, we can look around and even though we've had some heavy periods of rain, there's no indication of these leaves washing down uh, and piling up against the trees. So I think there's been almost no surface runoff here. Uh, so the permeability is quite good. It's well drained all the way through. So it would be a, a high permeability. The surface runoff is probably low. And the depth to hard rock would be almost infinite here because we're on coastal plain. There is no hard rock. You would have to dig for hundreds of meters before you would get to the, the basement rock because you're covered with this thick layer of uh, coastal plain material. So those are the kinds of information that we want to record. Uh, when we put all of this together, we can see that this is an altisol. Uh, first of all, we're in a warm region. We're a forested region. It has a BT horizon in it, very clear accumulation of clay. Uh, so that's a sign of a BT horizon in a, in a soil like this with a thin A horizon, so it's clearly not mollic, uh, as an ochre horizon. So it would either be an, an alphasol or an altosol, and that would depend on a chemical test, which I don't have the equipment to measure here, but if you measured the pH uh, with a hand kit, and the pH was uh, in the fives or fours, which it probably is here, uh, that would uh, tell you that the base saturation is low, that it's highly weathered, that uh, a lot of the calcium has been washed out of this soil, and that it's an altosol. So uh, this is a fairly typical altosol uh, in that it has a sequence of an A horizon, an E horizon, 
several BT horizons. If we dug deeper, we would actually find sandier material again. I'm not going to do it today. Uh, this is pretty hard to dig in. Um, but if we got just a little bit deeper, the maximum clay is right about here. If we start going down deeper than that, we'll find that it goes back to being a material kind of like this, uh, but without the organic matter. So the clay is definitely accumulated from that movement in a defined area. And, and we should mention, of course, in terms of the environment that it's in, uh, you know, in addition to being on this hill slope in the coastal plain, we're in a temperate climate, a humid temperate climate, uh, with an average of close to a thousand millimeters of rain per year. So it supports forests and, uh, and it supports a pretty high weathering. So we're in a fairly warm climate, uh, which probably was warmer in ancient days uh, when these soils uh, formed. So these are sort of semi-tropical uh, in their characteristics. So we said this is an altis in altisol. Uh, we know it's not uh, poorly drained altisol or we would have gray colors in here and, and, uh, and a water table. Uh, there's not a fragipan in it, so there's no real special features other than the BT horizon, which is required for an altisol. Uh, <clears throat> and it's in a humid region. It's got the forests and a lot of rainfall. So the humid region makes it a, uh, you know, it's a, you take the alt from altisol, which means ultimate in weathering, and you put it in the back. And for humid, it's a eudic environment, so it would be a eudalt. And since it's a, a fairly simple one without any special features like a fragipan in it, it would be a hapudol. Right? And it's not a very wet one, so it's not an aquic hapudol. It's not a very extremely sandy one. So it's a pretty typical one. So it's a typical hapudol.